Good morning, everyone. God's grace and peace to you on this day. Thank you for joining our West Los Angeles United Methodist Church online worship. Uh, friends, as yesterday, Saturday, June 1st, was the beginning of Pride Month, we as a reconciling United Methodist Church desire to welcome and include all in our church's ministry. Reconciling United Methodist churches, churches are those that especially want to publicly affirm that persons who identify themselves as LGBTQIA plus are welcomed into the full life of the church and ministry. Today is our annual Reconciling Celebration Service or Pride Service. But today is also a really special day to acknowledge the great changes that have come about in our United Methodist denomination at our worldwide gathering of United Methodists at what is known as General Conference, where key decisions are made regarding who we are and what we stand for as a denomination. Decisions that this year especially expand the grace and the welcome of the church to all. I will be addressing this a bit later and sharing with you two important and uplifting videos from our denomination as a result of general conference actions. So please stay tuned. Regarding our announcements, please continue to support our church's ministry through the giving of your time, talents, and monetary support. A QR code is included at the end of our worship in the announcements section that enables you to give online. But please know that you can always mail your donations directly to our church through postal mail as well. Now, Thursday, the breakfast bunch uh, takes place. This coming Thursday, June 6th at the Marie Callenders near the corner of National and Sautel Avenues. Uh, breakfast is at 8 a.m. and you can RSVP to me. Uh, come out to our Father's Day on June um, 16th for a ramen luncheon provided by our Japanese language division. That's going to be delicious. <laughs> our grief support groups happen. Uh, have, our next grief support group happens on Wednesday, June 19th at 1130 a.m. in the Learning Center. Please know, um, let me know if you would like to attend. And our kids camp is rapidly approaching and takes place on five consecutive Sundays beginning June 30th. So please register your children and tweens as soon as possible. And for one of our kids, uh, kids camp VBS projects, we could use some empty washed and dried two liter soda bottles if you can drop them off at church on Sundays or during the week. We'd really appreciate it. And there will be a wonderful flute and piano concert with Alex Louie and Lorenzo Sanchez. It is a benefit concert on Saturday, August 17th at 2 p.m. here at church to benefit the West LA UMC Youth Scholarship Fund and the Japan Noto Earthquake Relief Fund. Uh, see the information on the announcement slides to secure tickets and, and find out about the cost. We, have, we will also have a limited, we have a limited supply of West LA UMC Spirit Wear t-shirts still available. If you are interested in purchasing them, please contact Allison Brush or contact me to see what sizes and styles we still have left. Um, the Venice, Buna, uh, Venice Japanese Community Center will have their annual Natsu, Natsu Matsuri Festival with food, games, entertainment, demonstrations, ondo dancing, etc. That is Saturday and Sunday, June 22nd and 23rd. See the slide, uh, announcement slide for those times as well. And last but not least, please jo also join us on Sunday, June 30th for worship and for coffee fellowship time to express our appreciation to Ashley Ramsey for being our choir director all of these years that she has served on staff. And please also pray that God connects us to somehow to someone who might fill the choir director position following Ashley, who is as equally talented and faithful as she has been for us. Okay, let us worship now. Good morning. Please join me in the responsive call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This morning, we celebrate the work of our General Conference in Charlotte, 
almost 800 voting delegates from around the world and many more observers and supporters have met. We give thanks to the dedication of many that makes our connectional life possible. Once again, our denomination has shifted. We give thanks for the Spirit of God moving in our midst. Some of us have been longing for change, while others feel anxious in a changing world. Prepare us, O oh God, for the transformation within our midst. Help us to come together in Christian unity, keeping our focus on your love and our connection rather on than on the forces of division that seek to destroy your beloved community. Draw us in, O oh God. Help us to cherish our differences while we learn to live and love. Challenge us as we grow in love. We enter into a new day with possibility and hope. Transform our hearts so that we may respond to your world in light and love. Amen. Now let us pray. O holy God, enable us to draw near you in this hour. Help us sense your awesome presence as we gather as a community of faith to worship you. May we feel your love and healing, your guidance and truth as each has need. Increase the depth of our faith and the strength of our discipleship that we may more ably Follow be your faithful servants in the world. This we pray in Christ our Lord. Amen. Good morning, everybody. How many of you are right-handed? And how many of you are left-handed? How do you even know? You just know, right? Did you say to yourself, I want to be right-handed growing up? Or did you tell yourself, I want to write and use scissors to cut with my left hand. It just feels more comfortable to use one hand or the other. It's just part of who you are. And yes, some of you can use both hands, I know. Some overachievers, like Reverend Keith, who can take out both of his contacts at the same time. Who does that? Anyways, if someone told you to change from writing or cutting paper, from one hand to the other, it could be really difficult or feel strange. Or you might think, it's just not me. I can't do that. Well, this morning I'm going to share a book about a young boy, Calvin, who wants to be seen for who he truly is and who God made him to be. Calvin is transgender, meaning that everyone thought that he was a girl when he was born, but in his heart and in his brain, 
he knew that he actually felt like a boy. The word gender is more than just our body parts and what we look like on the outside. It's also about the roles in which we live. It is our identity and how we express it. For example, is it okay for girls to like to play with cars and boys to like dancing? Yes, of course. Is it okay for girls to like the color pink and boys to like the color pink? Yes, of course. All these things about us, what we like to do, makes us unique and so special, just the way God intended us to be. So let's hear Calvin's story. <clears throat> this is the book Calvin, and it is written by his parents, J.R. and Vanessa Ford, with illustrations by Kayla Harin. And it starts with a dedication, and it's for the teachers and all the role models who wrapped their arms around their family. And here we go. For as long as I could remember, I knew I was a boy. I draw myself with short hair and a shirt like Papa's. I dream about swim trunks like my dad and brother wore. I didn't tell my family until the night before our tremor, our summer trip to Gigi and Papa's, which was his grandparents. I was scared they wouldn't believe me, but I knew it was time to be me. Whenever I have to do something scary, my dad always says, take deep breaths and count down from five. Breathe in, breathe out, five, four, three, two, one. I'm not a girl, I told my family. I'm a boy, a boy in my heart and in my brain. We love you if you are a girl, a boy, neither or both. We love you whoever you are, my dad said. Later, dad told me the word for how I felt was transgender. Being transgender means other people think you are one gender, but inside you know you are a different one. I wondered how Gigi and Papa would react. As we got closer, I squeezed my stuffed lion to my chest. I had already told my family who I was. Now I needed to tell them my name. The same name as your favorite stuffed lion, Dad asked. It's why I named him that. It's always been my name to me. When we got to Gigi and Papa's, Dad told them my new name. He introduced me. Our summer trip turned out to be the best ever. At the comic convention, Papa bought me my favorite costume, my favorite superhero sign, my poster, using my real name. At Waterworld, Gigi brought me and my brother matching swim trunks. Even the water slides felt better in them. In line for popcorn, I made a new friend. I felt proud to tell him my name. We spent the whole day together. On the last day of vacation, at the big outlet stores near Gigi and Papa's, I picked out new clothes. That night, I gave my family a fashion show. You look so handsome, Gigi told me. School was starting soon, and I knew there was only one more thing I needed to feel like me. When I looked in the mirror, I finally saw me. Dad Sarah said there were other transgender people in the world, but I didn't know any kids like me in my school, and school started next week. Being the only one felt scary. How would everyone treat me? What if my friends wouldn't call me he? What if, what if, what if? The first day of school, I dragged my feet to the door. Breathe in, breathe out. Five, four, three, two, one. 
Welcome back to school. We're glad you're here. When the principal said my name, I felt safe and happy. Violet skipped up to me, calling out my new name, too. You know my name? I asked. Yep. Your dad told my mom you're a boy now. I have always been a boy inside. Are we still friends? Yes. Did you bring your jump rope for recess? When I stepped inside my classroom, I couldn't believe what I saw. The cubby, the lunch chart, the homework station and the mailboxes, the name tag on the table. My new name was everywhere, everywhere it should be. I felt my fears start to go away. Welcome back, class. Our morning meeting will share all about our summers. I knew just what I would say when it was my turn. I stood up proudly to share my summer story, but first I introduced myself. I said, my name is Calvin, C-A-L-V-I-N. I felt my what ifs melt away. Think about that story. What happened to make Calvin feel safe and happy? People said his name, greeting him. Calvin saw his name in the classroom, the desk, his cubby, his mailbox, and the kids were so friendly and treat him, treated him as they would everyone else. Calvin always knew he was a boy, even though the world saw him as a girl. But Calvin had the courage to tell his parents that he is a boy in his heart and in his brain. Calvin had great parents and a community of people named in the dedication and at the beginning of the book that helped Calvin to feel accepted and happy as God had made him. All of us here at our church, our West LA church family, can be the same kind of loving community that Calvin had to make everyone who comes to our church to feel safe and happy. Let us pray. Dear God, we are all different and unique. Some of us don't like to swim while others do. Some of us are right-handed while others are left-handed. We come from di different cultural backgrounds and feel comfortable being seen in different identities. And in all our differences, you love each of us as we are and how you made us. God, we know you do not make mistakes. Only people do. Help us to be accepting and the positive to support to everyone we meet. Amen. When you're not sure who you really are All you feel is the shape of your scars And you have more wounds than you can count Open your eyes, look all around You're not alone, this is your home Come and remember who you are here Do this to remember who Table, 
Hear now the word of God from the Old Testament prophetic book of Ezra, chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. When the builders laid the foundation of the temple of the Lord, the priests in their vestments were stationed to praise the Lord with trumpets, and the Levites, the sons of Asaph, with cymbals according to the direction of King David of Israel. And they sang responsively, praising and giving thanks for the Lord. For he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever toward Israel. And all of the people responded with a great shout when they praised the Lord because the foundation of the house of the Lord was laid. But many of the priests and Levites and heads of the families, old people who had seen the first house on its foundation, wept in a loud voice when they saw this house, though many shouted aloud for joy, so that the people could not distinguish the sound of the joyful shout from the sound of the people's weeping. For the people shouted so loudly that the sound was heard far away. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Friends, today here at West Los Angeles United Methodist Church, we celebrate our annual Pride Sunday worship, celebrating the fact that seven years ago, this church, our church, West Los Angeles United Methodist Church, made the decision to join the growing number of local United Methodist churches across the nation and world that have had hopes and dreams of becoming a more welcoming and inclusive denomination that embraces the sacred worth and participation of LGBTQIA plus siblings in faith in all aspects of our church's life. This growing body within our United Methodist denomination have declared themselves publicly reconciling United Methodist congregations, pastors, conferences, and bishops. It has been wonderful to see churches truly open, opening wide the doors of welcome and inclusion to persons who have historically been judged and turned away by the church, causing much pain and hurt. But friends, today we celebrate the fact that Broader, more pervasive, monumental decisions were made officially at our most recent United Methodist General Conference, which was held from April 23rd through May 3rd in Charlotte, North Carolina. General Conference is a gathering of United Methodists worldwide. It is a gathering of United Methodists that is supposed to take place every four years. I say supposed to, but due to the COVID pandemic, it was canceled and postponed in the past and thus delayed further deliberation and decision on changes that elected United Methodists could make to our Book of Discipline. The United Methodists have advocated and proposed changes to the wording in our Book of Discipline that since 1972 has stated that homosexuality is incompatible with Christian teaching and elsewhere indicates that no pra practicing homosexual may be considered for ordination. Growing numbers of United Methodists believe these statements have harmed persons who are LGBTQIA+, and, they, they, and that they are statements that are antithetical to many United Methodists' growing understanding of the wideness of God's grace and love in Jesus Christ. Many have felt the call to advocate the removal of this harmful language. It has been clear that we as the United Methodist denomination have been deeply enmeshed in a need for resolution on these issues to either stand with the tra tradition of these beliefs or advocate change on the basis of faith, compassion, and social justice. And so among the many decisions made at General Conference regarding the matters involving affirmation and inclusion of LGBTQIA persons in all aspects of church life, this was finally addressed and voted upon. And these monumental decisions included the removal of the harmful language of our United Methodist discipline, stating that homosexuality was incompatible with Christian teaching, and in addition, General Conference voted to approve the ordination of gay clergy. 
permission for United Methodist clergy to also bless and officiate same-sex marriages and provide financial support for LGBTQIA plus related ministries. As a reconciling United Methodist Church, I know we celebrate these changes. I believe our denomination is moving forward in a very faithful way that affirms our growing understanding of each other and of the grace of God in Jesus Christ. I celebrate these decisions made at our general conference for I believe that we are truly embodying our motto of open hearts, open minds, and open doors. So friends, here are two videos that I wanted to share with you. The first is about United Methodist General Conference in general, which I hope helps, helps you to get a real sense of the spirit that prevailed at General Conference this past month. Not one of conflict and disunity, but one of unity and hope for the future. I hope you find it inspiring in many ways. I hereby declare that the postponed 2020 General Conference is now adjourned. Amen. <laughs>《Beginning April 23, 2024, delegates from across our worldwide connection came together for the United Methodist Church's General Conference in Charlotte, North Carolina. Let's see what happened. Loving every bit, the worship, the preaching. The one thing that we do better than anybody I know is worship together. Every worship service I've been in has just been spectacular, and that's the wrong word. It's built my faith. Are you ready to be the people that God needs for us to be? Let's go. There's just a lot of hope going around and it makes me very happy to be here and it makes me happy for where the church I hope is headed. How people are talking together, how people are praying together, singing together. People are more open to relationship, to learning about each other, to learning about issues. It's a good experience being here too to discuss issue moving our church forward. This feels like community and the church and fullness and wholeness. This is an opportunity for a new beginning and there's so much hope that I've seen during this General Conference. General Conference is the prime decision-making body and the only organization that can speak on behalf of the United Methodist Church. Effective decision-making is grounded in effective communication. That helps reinforce the vision of the church and also our identity as United Methodists. What we're trying to do is democratize access to information. Our role is to be the trumpet for this entire denomination globally and highlight all of the work that's happening around the world. And we remain very committed to that mission. I've learned that it's a very connectional church. Our agencies can help live our mission beyond the local church. It's a great opportunity for us to expand a lot of the ministry beyond our borders. The General Conference offers an opportunity to celebrate the strength of witness we build through our connectional United Methodist system. We had the, the commissioning for new missionaries from GBGM, from everywhere to everywhere. I present our new missionaries commissioned to service on behalf of the United Methodist Church. We're an organization uh, that's been mandated through the church, through the Book of Discipline, uh, to engage the church, hold the church accountable, while also building up resources and thinking through what it means to be a church that is equitable and just. I'm representing Christian Unity and the Council of Bishops. We've been working with Church and Society, with GBHEM, of course with G-Corps, with Discipleship Ministries. Gracious and loving God, our hearts are full today because this is your day. The church is growing and it is on the move. The Holy Spirit is moving and birthing a church that we always knew was there.
we have not only worshipped, we have commissioned missionaries, we have engaged in receiving petitions that have to do with acts of repentance for heinous acts. We've tended to conversations about healing for people who are the victims of uh, sexual violence. Today, um, we're observing the Thursdays in Black campaign. So it's a global movement to end all forms of sexual violence and gender-based violence. When we came into General Conference, uh, there were many who were concerned about the three R's, regionalization, revised social principles, and removing restrictive language. It is moved to adopt calendar item number 22, worldwide regionalization. Calendar item number 22 has been approved. It's a very uh, good step towards a collaboration as one people, as well as, as one family. We used to be a U.S. church with satellites in different parts of the world. Now we'll become a truly global church where we relate to each other on a more equal level. We are a beautiful, diverse, international, worldwide church. And the regionalization plan is a reflection of what that looks like. Today, we have taken a journey whereby every region within our church will be on the same level. We don't want anybody to be at the center except for our Lord Jesus Christ and all of us will exist with total equity, sharing the gifts and the resources that we may offer to each other. The affirmative has it and the motion is adopted. Delegates without debate passed an end to a 40-year-old ban on self-avowed practicing homosexuals from being clergy. We passed the removal of this ban on gay clergy with an overwhelming 93% affirmative vote, a signal of a new period of unity in our church. We have more traditional people, we have more progressive people, we have people with different views, but we're open to everyone, and now we are truly open to everyone. It's an exciting day for the United Methodist Church. To me, this is just a reflection of the truth about the church that I've always known. It is a day of celebration, a day that I have a sense of peace and of joy. Maybe for the first time when we say open hearts, open minds, open doors, we are consistent with our message, like we really mean it this time. This has really been a 12-year effort to revise these social principles and our goal as directed by the General Conference was to make them more concise, more theologically grounded and reflective of our worldwide denomination as we begin this next chapter of United Methodism. I have felt a real sense of our commitment to personal holiness and social holiness. We're serious about helping people come to find Christ, to know Christ, and then to go live out their faith in the world in a way that sees the kingdom of God come on earth as it is in heaven. It was uh, an amazing undertaking. People all over the church and the world have been working on it. But we're really excited to have a completely brand new judicial council who can help walk us through the process of regionalization. We're also very excited that we've been able to enter into an official communion agreement with the Episcopal Church. We're also working on our commitment to Christian unity and reconciliation by developing an official agreement to create an apology on behalf of the United Methodist Church for our involvement in the overthrow of the Hawaiian monarchy. We also just passed the smallest budget in the history of the General Conference. The U.S. jurisdictions have agreed to no elections for the time being and a total of 32 U.S. bishops allocated across the jurisdictions. And deacons finally have sacramental authority in ministry contexts. Calendar item number 554 is adopted. This is an historic moment. We are registering people for uh, the General Conference. I am a marshal. I'm here on an official monitoring for GCOS row. I'm uh, serving as a translator and interpreter for Portuguese and English. Clergy delegate from the Mountain Sky Conference. I'm serving as a page. Each session of General Conference is streamed live, and every day over 1,000 people participate in General Conference as a delegate, observer, or volunteer. There is a lot going on in the plenary, but there is a lot also that's going on behind the scenes, like communications-wise and all the logistics. So we thank you very much for everyone who's helping out uh, making this happen.
we have a very different church. We are moving forward as a different church. This is a new day. There is a bright hope for the future and for the church as well. We are having a new set of mindset of change for everyone to feel inclusive. The most important thing about Methodism to me is the being able to be connected with people who are different than us and agreeing on these most important things. I think the main thing is we continue to reach uh, souls for Jesus Christ. That always has been part of our Methodism, our connection. It's a delight to watch the United Methodist Church move with confidence and energy and boldness into the future. To me, that would, that's what it means to be UMC. Yes, we are excited about our future. God is doing a new thing. There is a renewed hope and a renewed focus in the life of our church as we continue to expand our witness for Jesus Christ and live into our mission of making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. And the second video is Words of Grace and Hope from our retired and active bishops of our Western jurisdictional region of our United Methodist Church, both active and retired United Methodist bishops. They all speak of the optimism and the hope and the celebration of where we have arrived and where God is leading us as a denomination. So please enjoy and be inspired by both of these videos. A reading from the prophet Ezra, chapter 3, verses 10 through 13. When the workers laid the foundation of the Lord's temple, the priests in their robes stood up with trumpets, and the Levites and the sons of Asaph with cymbals to praise God in the tradition of King David. They sang responsively in praise and thanksgiving to God. Yes, God is good. Oh yes, God never quit loving Israel. All the people boomed out hurrahs, praising God as the foundation of the temple was laid. As many were noisily shouting with joy, many of the older priests, Levites, and family heads who had seen the first temple when they saw the foundations of this temple laid, they wept loudly for joy. People couldn't distinguish the shouting from the weeping. The sound of their voices reverberated for miles around. Beloved siblings of Christ within the Western jurisdiction and beyond, with joy we speak to you, knowing that this is truly a new day for our United Methodist Church. After eight years since our last formal general conference and five years since a devastating special session, where we declared the Western jurisdiction would indeed be a home for all, we arrived here in Charlotte already changed people. We've seen how a pandemic has transformed our globe and how misinformation has divided us as a people of faith and of science. And we've watched as politics have polarized us, disaffiliations have limited our resources, and the sin of racism continues to cause much harm. We came to this space changed already. As United Methodists in our individual ministry context, we came with heavy hearts and our own personal burdens and fears we came knowing this is a church that must repent for its part in causing harm to marginalized communities, even as we've eagerly claimed Christ in our midst over the course of our history. Today, we can celebrate with the whole church and especially with our LGBTQIA plus siblings for whom many barriers have finally been removed. After years of struggle, rules, and restrictions that have limited how they could respond to God's call upon their lives that labeled them incompatible have finally been lifted. 
Loving couples who couldn't have their marriages celebrated or recognized by the church can now be seen and fully embraced. We celebrate with pastors across our connection who can officiate marriages. They can do it for couples without fear of retribution. And local churches that can now embrace and care for all of God's children without discriminatory church law undermining their actions. The prophet Ezra tells us of the return of God's people after decades living in the Babylonian diaspora, dispersed in an attempt to rob them of their identity. As they laid the foundation stones for the second temple, there were shouts for joy and much praise for God. Ezra pauses in his telling to share how the older priests wept for joy, their deep sorrow released in a moment of exultation. Their restoration as a people was finally at hand. Many among us have been waiting for this day for so long as they've held on to their memory of the church that loved and nurtured them until it didn't. We give thanks for their resiliency and praise for God's faithfulness. And we'd be amiss not to mention the trailblazers who led us to this place, who have passed into that great cloud of witnesses. So many dear colleagues on the Western Jurisdiction College of Bishops who risked their reputations and even their credentials by taking acts of courageous leadership on behalf of justice. And we lament the harm done to all those called into ministry by God to whom the church said no, or worse. The witness they made by refusing to be anyone other than the child of God they are is why we can rejoice today. Even as we celebrate this progress, we still have much work to do. Racism and the vestiges of colonialism continue to separate us from one another. The regionalization petitions delegates approve will require the ratification of annual conference members next year. If ratified, regionalization will move our global church toward equal standing, allowing different regions more agency to respond to their ministry context. With this passage, we will have the opportunity to begin and renew ministries and relationships that have been strained by years of conflict and strife. We are so grateful for our Western jurisdiction delegations and for all of the delegates across the connection who debated, listened, amended, and approved legislation with a spirit of collaboration and grace. They are a testament to our resilience, our adaptability, and our unwavering faith in the promise of a brighter future together. Like the ancient Israelites, we have only begun our work toward building the church the world needs today. The legislative accomplishments of this general conference have been good, but they are just an invitation. It is nothing if we don't change our behavior. What we do when we go home will tell the world what we have learned from the years of trying to legislate hearts and minds. United Methodist in the Western jurisdiction and beyond seize this moment. Love your neighbors deeply, especially those who are different from you. Let curiosity arrive long before you rush to judgment. Build and renew relationships and connections that circle the globe. Work for peace wherever there is conflict. Care for the earth and all that is in it, for it is all a gift from God. Love without limits, because that is what Jesus did. This is a day of new beginnings. Let our work begin. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Dearest God, creator of our beautiful and extravagant diversity, whose presence is made known in each and every one of us, created in your image and sacred in your sight. On this Pride Sunday and always, may we see one another with your eyes, with love and generosity and compassion and welcome, with hope of a beloved community of heaven on earth. To this we aspire. Yet we confess that as a people and as the United Methodist Church, we have not always walked in love. We have judged. We have discriminated against others. We have excluded. Even as we and our Asian and immigrant and LGBTQ plus ancestors at this church have been judged, been discriminated against, and been excluded. We lament and repent for the harm and suffering that we have caused and let continue through our complacency and ignorance. O oh God, we lament and repent for the decades since 1972 that the United Methodist Church has oppressed and excluded our LGBTQ plus siblings, called to lay and ordained ministry and service, stifling their spiritual gifts and denying them a welcome space in which to flourish and punishing those who honored love between partners of the same gender. God, we lament and repent for those whom the church diminished, denied, and defrocked, for those whose affirmation came only from you in the heavenly realm, but not from their congregations or conferences. These, the rainbow saints of your church. We pause in silence with regret and repentance. God, O patient one, we give thanks and praise for the faith and perseverance of those bishops, clergy, laity, and others within the United Methodist Church and within this very congregation who remained steadfast, who organized, who listened and made a way out of no way despite the barriers. For it is you, God, who provided strength and hope in the darkest hours. God, you have worked through your faithful to lead our denomination out of the wilderness and into a fertile new land at last, a place where we make amends and engage in restoration for past wrongs while pausing to honor this sacred moment of transition. At this time of new beginnings, we arrive at this place where we shout, Never again! Bless and guide us, O God, as we continue our work here as a reconciling United Methodist Church to co-create that beloved community with an expansive and inclusive and colorful table for all where our lesbian, gay, transgender, bisexual, intersex, asexual, and all gender expressions and sexual orientations and races and ethnicities and abilities gather in our exceptional intersectionality and where we are affirmed as family, as Ohana. Loving and gracious God of rainbow promises, let us collectively and individually use our energy our gifts, and our resources to be an inviting presence as a church universal, a church of open doors, open hearts, and open minds, not just on Pride Sunday or the month of June, but always. Amen. And now let us join our voices together in the prayer that Jesus, Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, hear now these words of benediction. Through God's Spirit, God has provided us each, our church and our denomination, with new beginnings and new opportunities for witness and service. So go out into the week, out into the world, sharing God's amazing grace um, in whatever way that you can bring light and hope into the world. So go, be of good character and faith, be God's love and light to those in need, and may the grace of God in Jesus Christ go with us always. Amen. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Take care.